this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 311 doing a Prosh Commander deck tech. Now this is going to be a little bit different deck tech than ones that you've seen. I do have a list in here because people love lists. But what I'm really going to do is talk about Prosh, give you some ideas and ways to play Prosh. Definitely on the more spiky competitive side of things. Then give you a deck list that comes from one of the people out of the uh, USAG Visebait Commander group over there. There, and then some thoughts on what I would do to kind of change and customize that deck to make it my own. I am a big fan of customizing decks to really fit your own style. And with Commander, there are so many options out there. There's some great card choices. Let's talk about the Commander for a second, though. Prosh is one of those Commanders that was designed for Commander specifically. The more times you cast Prosh, the stronger Prosh gets. Prosh just brings more and more Cobalts into the battlefield and can be used again and again. The Cobalts are crazy. Now, I know they're technically not a card, although if I'm playing this deck, I'm getting 20 or 40 of those little Cobalt creatures from Legends because they don't actually have a token or I'm gonna order some cool tokens online somewhere. Having the tokens adds a lot to the deck. It's important though to realize that they are not cards, even if you're using the legend Cobalts of Kerr Keep. They are tokens and that's gonna matter rules wise. Prosh can do a lot of damage really, really quickly, especially on a second or third cast of Prosh. Prosh has some best friends. In my humble opinion, Skull Clamps, Crater Hoof, and Kessig Roof Run are the top friends of Prosh. It's tough in these colors to get card draw and Skull Clamps is the absolute best card draw. Crater Hoof can turn Prosh into a I kill the whole table instead of I kill one person. And Kessig is just a wonderful way to turn all those little kobolds into really crazy fire breathers with trample. Prosh does have a pretty good amount of combos. And as I said, this is gonna be a spiky video. This is not on your group hug side of things. Prosh plus food chain magnet equals infinite mana for casting creatures. Let's walk through this really quickly. Food chain in play, play Prosh get six cobalts, sack those, you're gonna get 13 mana. You use eight of that to recast Prosh. Yes, Prosh costs two more each time, but you're getting two additional cobalts, so you're netting seven mana each time. You can repeat this until you get a huge number of creatures out there and a huge amount of mana. If you want to add Perforos, you can just end the game right there. There are many other ways to get a large amount of mana with Prosh, mana that you could use on anything. Prosh can also kill really, really, really quickly. You got Xenagos out, you put Prosh out, you sack all those little kobolds, you attack, and next thing you know, you've already commander damaged somebody out of the game. Prosh is also an ideal target for poison. Poison is really mean in EDH and people often don't see it coming. They go from choosing not to block because they think they've got a turn or two before commander damage will get them to dead instantaneously. Prosh also comes with a bunch of cobalts. Use the cobalts. Use them often and wisely. Build stuff into your deck that is going to allow you to capitalize on these little cobalts. Diabolic Intent, wonderful tutor there. As good as Demonic Tutor when you've got Cobalts. And sometimes even better because you're triggering a creature going to the graveyard. Battle Driver, this ogre makes all those real attackers. Goblin Bombardment, very durable way to do a lot of damage with those little Cobalts. And Flesh Bag Marauder, these sacrifice effects which appear to be equal to both sides are really one-sided when you got a bunch of Cobalts you can just give up. Card draw is really Really, really important in this deck unless you win right away you need a way to refill your hand skeletal scrying sylvan library garuk fucundancy skull clamps all wonderful cards to do that let's take a second here to talk about tokens dying this is definitely a rules thing that you're gonna have to explain to people again and again tokens go to the graveyard and they disappear as a state-based effect. You can't respond to them being there, but they will trigger these effects that then can be responded to. 
really, really powerful. Both of these cards combo extremely well with killing all those kobolds. Think about ways also that you can just use the kobolds to attack, to do huge amounts of damage. Your commander plus the kobolds, all getting plus five plus five from a Beastmaster's Ascension adds up to 40 damage. In the Web of War is another nice way to make those kobolds a real threat for individuals. Here's a prosh list from Matthew, who's a member of the USAG Weisbotten group. It is a solid list. I'm not recommending that you directly copy this list. I would read through this list for some ideas and figure out what type of a prosh deck you want yourself. Here are some of the ideas of I would add to that list if I was going to customize it to really give it my own feel. And this is to make it even more spiky. I'm normally a little bit more of a casual player, but occasionally I do put together super competitive decks. Sadistic Hypnotist combos really well with the Kobolds. Anger is tougher to remove than most of the enchantments that you're using to give out haste. And Aggravated Assault can be a very powerful win condition. If a budget is not an issue, Mana Crypt, Grim Monolith, Gaia's Cradle, Cavern of Souls, these are all very, very solid cards to add. I also like to have a splash of control in my deck so that it's not just me trying to race as fast as possible and my opponent trying to race. If I can blink their last four turns with a constant mist or a moment's peace and then swing back and win, I'm happy to do so. I also find that having a Koshin Grip or a Beast Within can often deal with pesky permanents that are preventing me from winning the game. Lands give you a lot of options, and I'm really happy with the Temples right now in EDH. Kessig I already mentioned, Moss Wart Bridge is a wonderful one in these colors, and the Flamekin Village is another way to give your commander haste, and it's there on a land. There's also some really good options out there for multicolor lands. Generally, I would look through Gather and choose some really good options so that you are making sure that you can cast your commander really consistently. For pump spells, I like pump spells that actually blank removal. Stonewood Invocation and Vines of Vastfoot are two great pump spells that keep your creature alive. This has the dual purpose of crushing your opponent and demoralizing them that their particular removal is not saving them. A little bit of graveyard manipulation can help in a deck like this, especially if you have heavy control players in your group. The ability to come back and attack a second or third or fourth time is really useful. Noxus Revival is instant speed. Seasons Past can often just give you your whole graveyard back. Deadbridge Chant not only can get you cards, but if your opponent removes your entire graveyard and you've got a chant in play, whatever you put into your graveyard is coming back again and again. Grim Harvest, another really nice card there. Instant Speed and Recovery is one of those abilities that doesn't see enough play in EDH. For Planeswalkers, I would consider a little bit of ramp in my planeswalkers and ways to give out some haste or to give plus three plus three that overrun effect to all those kobolds turn those kobolds into a wing condition with planeswalker friends and this has got to be one of my favorite unblockable spells out there traitor's clutch yes technically it can be blocked but nobody has shadow you're getting through for some serious damage with your commander this way. To deal with heavy control players, there's no card like City of Solitude. This card shuts down abilities and spells on other people's turns. You can do whatever you want. And Aestheticism is a nice way to keep your creatures alive and even give those little kobolds regeneration so they become infinite blockers in a long drawn out political game. If you've got any ideas or your own deck list on how you use kobolds to crush people, please put them in the comments. I would like to hear your ideas and how you would build a prosh deck. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. It's people like you that enable me to do videos like this. And until next time, choose the cards wisely.